Hi and welcome to this short clip looking at naming aromatic compounds. Let's start by reminding ourselves that any compound with a benzene ring can be classed as aromatic. So if we put the benzene ring in a yellow highlight, we can see that in this case one of the hydrogens on the benzene ring has been substituted by a certain group. So this substituent will be given a name which goes into the, the, the name benzene compounds. So nitrobenzene means you have a nitro group substituted for one of the hydrogens. If we look at the structural formula, we always use C6H5 to represent the benzene ring, as you can see from the pink highlighted parts. Now, because we all have one substituent only, uh, they're called monosubstituted. So let's have a look at some disubstituted examples. So this brings in the need for locant numbers. So locant number tells you whereabouts on the ring the substituent is put. So it tells us where the, the group is attached. So, for example, for 2 bromomethylbenzene and 3 bromomethylbenzene and 4 bromomethylbenzene, you have the bromine attached at carbon number 2, carbon number 3, and carbon number 4, respectively. Obviously, the basic aromatic ring here is um, a methylbenzene template that we're using, and we're attaching bromine as a separate sub second substituent. So it's quite important to think about the locant number and whether it's the largest or the smallest that's possible. So if you were to imagine that you counted counterclockwise, then 2 bromomethylbenzene would now become 6 bromomethylbenzene. And 3 bromomethylbenzene would become 5 bromomethylbenzene. So both of those are incorrect because they don't use the smallest possible locant number. 2 is smaller than 6. 3 is smaller than 5. In the case of 4 bromomethylbenzene, it doesn't make any difference. So when you have phenyl versus benzene in the name, looking at the benzene ring again, we have 6 carbons present. If the R group has 7 or more carbons in it, then the uh, benzene ring becomes a phenyl group. So if we apply this to straightforward alkyl chains, if we start off with ethyl benzene, there's 2 carbons in the ethyl group, 6 carbons in the benzene ring. Which means it's called ethyl benzene. The benzene part is at the end of the name, so it's a suffix. However, if we increase the number of carbons in the alkyl chain to seven, this now becomes seven carbon atoms as opposed to six. So we call it phenylheptane. And what that means is the phenyl part goes at the beginning, and that's a prefix. If the R group has a new functional group, then sometimes this means phenyl becomes a prefix in the name. Unfortunately, it's not universal or fixed, but here's some common A-level examples for our specification. So um, uh, eth um, ethene with a phenyl group attached to it is called phenylethene, um, and an aldehyde group with a benzene ring attached to it is called benzaldehyde. So we've got benzoic acid, we have phenylamine, and we have phenylethanol. So, pause the clip and see if you can try some of these. I've added the lookout numbers on to a couple of them to help you out. So I'm now assuming you've had a go at those ones. So the first one is obviously methylbenzene, like we mentioned before. Then we've got ethylbenzene, and we have propylbenzene. In the bottom left-hand corner, you can see that the benzene ring is drawn as a Kekule structure. Um, ideally, at OCR at A-level, it's drawn as a uh, delocalized pi ring with the circle inside the hexagon. But in this case, we're just looking at naming, not the structure and the drawing. So it's 5-methyl-1,3-dinitrobenzene. So um, M comes before N, so the methyl comes before the nitro in the name. The next one is 1,3,5-trimethylbenzene. And the next one after that is 1-bromo-2-chloro-3,5-dimethylbenzene. Bromo begins with B, that comes before C in chloro, which comes before M in methyl, so the substituents are placed in alphabetical order. It's not in number order, it's alphabetical order. Okay, so hopefully this has been a uh, useful but short introduction to naming aromatic um, compounds at A-level. Thanks for listening, until next time, see you soon.